Sink, the Serene Stamper, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Nova Scotia, Canada. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, you know how much I appreciate it when you watch my videos. The technique I'm sharing with you today uses clear embossing powder and the heat embossing technique. This is a technique that you can use no matter what stamps you have. It's really, really fun, super easy, but I think it's just one of those techniques that sometimes we don't think about it's a little bit outside of the box but it's really really easy so let's get started okay this is gonna be another one of those cards that I do on the fly I have an idea in my mind using these stamp sets using the technique I want to show you um, so we're gonna see how it goes I am using the birch um, background stamp this came out in our new annual catalog don't you just love that catalog uh, there's so many good things in it but I only just got this so let me go ahead and stick my label on I'm peeling off the layers and I can tell where that bigger clump of ink is that that's this bit here so that's how I know where to position that so peel this off and I'm just going to line it right Shazam! There it is, ready to be stamped. Now I will mention, um, it sounds like I'm in kind of an empty room, kind of echoey, and that's because I am. Uh, we just had that Hurricane Dorian go through Nova Scotia, and uh, we did okay where we're at. A couple trees down, but nothing major. But uh, my stamp room has been downstairs where there's no window, and as cute as I had my little room set up, I decided um, I'm going to move my room up to a spare room that we don't use often with a nice big window, so even though we have a generator, I can stamp with the generator off and have lots of light. So I'm in the process of moving things upstairs. So I've only got a few things up here and I promise uh, <laughs> once I get everything moved in here, it won't be so echoey. So bear with me, same with the lighting. I've kind of um, kind of doing a, a different setup than what I normally do for my videos. So this is Whisper White cardstock. I'm going to cut it at five and a half and spin it around, line it up at the four and a quarter, and score it. So that will be my card base. And then this piece, I'm going to trim down to measure three and three quarters by five, and the reason for that is because I know I'm gonna to want to mount this onto my card, so I need it to be a little bit smaller than, um, five and a quarter by four. That will be my next layer measurement. And because I'm winging it, I'm not even sure what colors of cardstock I'm going to be using. Okay, look at this stamp set that I'm going to use. I love this so much. If you have the waterfront stamp set, you are probably going to be ordering the snow front because if you love this, you're gonna love that. And if you don't have either, you need to get them because they're awesome. So because this stamp set is photopolymer, I have my um, uh, paper piercing mat underneath and I'm gonna get a block handy here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to stamp is this mountain image. And I'm going to stamp this in smoky slate. So I'm gonna ink that up. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp right there. Look how that does all the shading for you. Like, can you see where it's dark and light? It's just, this is just such a cool type of stamp image. So now I'm gonna stamp my house, my little cabin, I should say. And I'm going to use early espresso for that. And I think I'm going to stamp it right there. And I'm just holding it down for a few seconds because when you do that, it just gives the ink a really good um, chance to absorb into your cardstock. Okay, what do I want to do next? I think I'm going to take these trees. I'm going to stamp them with gray granite. And I'm going to stamp them right there. Now I'm taking my garden green 
and I'm taking this tree. If you're familiar with Bob Ross and his paintings, you'll know that this is a happy little tree <laughs> that we're putting right there. And without re-inking, I'm going to stamp it again just behind it. Now I'm taking the little pine tree and I'm going to stamp that right there. And we have a cute little snowman. So I'm going to stamp the snowman with the smoky slate ink pad. I'm going to stamp him right between those trees. It's my happy little snowman. <laughs> Look how this is coming together, you guys. Don't you just love it? I love it. So fast. If you needed to make a card in a hurry or if you needed to make lots of cards, this is your stamp set, my friends. You are going to be amazed at how easy it is to build a scene using these images. So now I'm using my real red and I'm stamping a bird right on top of that branch. And because the ink pad is, you know, pretty dark, uh, you're not going to see that branch really coming through too much. And if you need to, you can always take red marker and go on top of the image of the bird. I'm going to do another one. Where am I going to put this guy? Right there. I have a National Geographic clock that uh, plays a different bird on every hour and it just started chirping because it's one o'clock and um, I thought that was rather fitting as I'm stamping my birds but I didn't know if you can hear it in the background <laughs> so if you think I'm adding sound effects to my video I'm not that was just really good timing okay so now I want to add um, some ground just to well ground these images really so I'm taking this little zwiggle stamp my little zwiggle and I'm going back into my smoky slate and I'm just gonna stamp it I'm gonna stamp it right on top of the cabin just lightly and we have a little snowy path now I'm taking this stamp I'll show you I'm using this one right here and I'm gonna add a little base underneath the snowman also using my smoky slate and I'm actually going to um, go a little bit past the tree and this little hump I want it to hit this tree here so it looks like see it looks like it's a little snowy hill and I'm going to do the same thing over here going right on top of those trees and one more um, where do I want that Eek. right there I think pretty awesome right I actually think I'm going to leave it at that and now that I have my stamping done I'm going to go ahead and show you the rest of the technique. You want to make sure that your ink is dry before you move on to the next step. Then I'm taking my embossing buddy and I'm tapping it over the entire piece of paper. Okay so next I'm taking my Versamark ink pad and I am just tapping it over where I have stamped and I really want to make sure that I get I'm actually going to push it right down in the middle see I'm pushing it right down on top because I really want to make sure that I have first a mark covering for the most part where I have stamped and now and I don't want it to be like just a total rectangle shape I mean you can absolutely you're the artist and the creator of what you want to do I just want to show you the different look you can get by kind of tapping it around but again if you just want to go straight down push down on your image that's going to be just absolutely fine I am now taking my clear embossing powder and I don't know where the spoon is for this so I'm just going to pour it on and shake it off Okay, tap off all the excess powder and if you have any powder where you don't want it just take a paintbrush let me bring this back in just take a paintbrush and go over where you don't want that powder and tap it off and actually I really like 
the look I'm getting from that. So I'm going to go all the way around doing that. See, even I learn different things as I'm going along. Okay, so now I have gone around the picture with my paintbrush, removing any of that clear embossing powder that I didn't want, and also creating a shape around my image with the embossing powder. So I'm going to heat that up now. The things you want to do when you're heat embossing is just turn your paper around because if you see any powder, you'll know that you need to put the heat tool on that spot a little bit longer. So um, now that I've heat embossed it, I'm just making sure there's no powder on it and it looks pretty darn good. Okay, now it's time to move on to the birch stamp. So I've just put a piece of computer paper behind that and I'm going to use my um, soft suede and ink up my image stamp it twice. So I'm just pushing down. There's a little bit here that's not under the stamp. That's okay. I'll get it on the next run. Pushing down nice and firm. Normally when I use my big stamps, I have my stamp upside down and put the paper on it. Um, but I didn't do that today. See, and you're like, what the heck? She's got ink all over her embossed portion. Well, it's all good, my friends. And because I have this knot, the knot image, I'm going to flip this around so that I don't get more of that up on top. And I'm not worrying about uh, overlapping on some of that. There we go. Now I'm just taking paper towel and I'm wiping off that excess ink. So this is this is basically emboss resist, um, but it's just a different way of using our clear embossing powder. Now, some of this ink that um, blends up, that's fine. That just adds to the look. I'm going to take a little water, spritz a little water on there. Oh yeah, big difference. There we go. You can see how that's resisting really, really nice. So because there's a bit of water on my paper towel, as I'm going around the edge, that's what's adding some of that color. And I want that because I really want this white in the center to stand out a bit. I'm going to add a little bit more water. This is just an old stamp and mist bottle. And I'm pulling down some of the wiping around the edge so I can really get the shape of that embossing that I did. And it's better to go with a little bit of water and add more than too much water because of course you don't want your paper to get too wet. And then finally just do another little wipe inside your stamped area. And then Make sure it's nice and dry. And that's what you get. Isn't that neat? I'm gonna go ahead and finish my card. And I think I'm gonna use real red for my, um, my layer. Okay, so if you recall, this is cut at five by three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter by four. Okay, so I've got my Snell adhesive behind this. Just put that on nice like that. Okay, Murphy's Law. I've decided after that this has been glued that I should put some ribbon on it. So. I'm going to take some of our new um, Real Red Cotton Ribbon from our holiday catalog and I'm just going to 
measure it and snip it. And I'm going to try to lift this up because I put a lot of snail on there. Keeping it real, my friends, as I always try to do. Okay. I'm going to put a strip of snail down along there and some snail in the middle of my ribbon. And I'm going to move it up a bit because I don't want it to hide all that birch. Mm. There we go. Fold those over. And it's not quite center. There we go. Got my ribbon on there. It's a little bit warbly here, but that's where I'm going to put my bow. In the little bunny ear bow, so all I'm doing is taking my ribbon, making a loop, and making another loop, hence the little bunny ears, and then this goes over and then under and through, through there. So this goes over. Here, I'll do it bigger. If you've never seen this before, it's a great bow to make. Okay, bunny ears, and then this goes over, okay, and then this bit here goes in through here. And then I just pull on the ends until I get the size of the ribbon that I want. So that's how you do that. Now I'm going to redo it because I don't want to waste a whole bunch of ribbon. I wanted to make it bigger just to show you how, how it comes together. Now I'll make a smaller one. I'm taking my glue dots and I'm going to put a glue dot and then just position that onto my card. Just like that. I'm going to put one more just under here just to hold everything in place. The last thing we need is the sentiment. I say the last thing, but as I say that, I'm thinking, mmm, glitter. Might need glitter. You know what? I am going to do some glitter. I'm just going to take my fine tip glue. I'm going to put a little bit down here. Does this happen to you guys where you think you're done and then you get another idea and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to do that. It would have been better if I did it before the ribbon, you know, that kind of thing. You're not alone. And I'm just adding a little bit here and there. I'm going to bring this computer paper back in to catch my glitter. So this is our new ice stamp and glitter that I'm using. It's um, a little more coarse than our Dazzling Diamonds. I'm going to sprinkle this on. Okay, I actually think that was a really good call because I've got the beautiful clear embossing powder in the background and some of that glitter to add a bit of dimension and sparkle. Yeah, happy, happy. This is another one of our new stamp sets called Christmas Gleaming. The Christmas Gleaming is another gorgeous new stamp set. It's actually a bundle in the new holiday catalog that comes with the punches. So I will have some more videos coming soon using this. Um, but right now I'm just going to grab the sentiment for this card. Put it on my block. Okay, I have a little piece of scrap paper here. Put this down so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing and I'm going to ink up my sentiment with my early espresso oh I should use my stamparatus for this 
which I still might do. It's just I really like that I can stamp over and over and over and get it really good and dark. But this might be just fine, holding it down for a few extra seconds. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that. Now I'm just going to trim that out. Okay, so I'm taking two of our mini dimensionals. No, I'm going to do three actually. I'm going to put one right in the middle here. There's my finished card. This was such a fun card to make and the end result was as much as a surprise to me as I'm sure it was to you. Um, but I just, I'm going to start doing more videos like this where I just put the, the camera on when I've got an idea in my head and I want to try a technique and I want to use it with certain stamp sets and, um, and just have fun stamping. Even though you're not here in the room with me, I feel like you are. And um, and I just really appreciate you. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to hit the subscribe button. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this technique. Try it out with your stamp sets. Uh, of course, you're free to copy my, my card ideas. This is why I share them to give you inspiration. And um, I know you're going to have a lot of fun playing with, with this technique and using your embossing powder maybe in a way you hadn't considered before. Happy stamping! Camping.